a new year, 2019, and quite often I choose a theme. I don't always follow the theme I choose, but uh, uh, this year it's the, the theme is Thy Kingdom Come. I want to particularly emphasize this year um, the Lord's kingdom, the, Lord, the, the Lord's rule in our heart and in our, our lives. Um, the, the phrase comes, of course, from what we know as the Lord's Prayer or the, the model prayer and uh, the part where he, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And uh, Luke chapter 6 is one of the times that Jesus preached the, uh, what we know of as the Sermon on the Mount. If, if you have notes in your Bible, mine calls it in Luke the Sermon on the Plain. He probably preached it many times in uh, different lengths and, and different uh, emphasis. Uh, but in, in Luke chapter 6, we have almost a summary or a, a briefer version of what uh, Matthew presents in Matthew 5 through 7. And I'll, I'll be looking at both passages today. And Luke chapter 6 is kind of the conclusion, well, it is the conclusion, uh, verse 46. Jesus says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. You can see we're talking about a foundational issue this morning. And uh, very important for us to understand that Jesus is, in fact, the King of kings and Lord of lords. The question is, is he your king? And uh, that's what we want to, to look at. Uh, we need to understand what that means when we say he's the king. You know, we don't live in a country that really has a, a king, you know, I guess kind of theoretically we have a queen, but, uh, you know, it's so far away and so abstract, we don't really, uh, you know, know much about it. But, you know, in the old days, a king, man, if he looked at you and said off with his head, y your head was coming off. I mean, the king uh, did, did what he wanted, and your job was to obey him and to make sure that he was a successful king. Uh, when we talk about a king, he's the one that's in charge, and we're the ones responsible to obey him. With the king, there's no democracy. There's no republic. You know, it's a, it's a, well, we're talking about a theocracy. We're talking about God being in control. Romans 11.36 puts it this way, For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Well, he didn't miss anything there, did he? Of him, through him, to him, everything. 1 Corinthians 1.31 says, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Unfortunately, we often get this backward. You know, the Bible says, thy kingdom come. It doesn't say my kingdom come. It says thy kingdom come, God's kingdom. Uh, I've heard more than one person say to me, uh, and they had different various situations, but they'd say, I faced this situation. And I asked God to help, and God didn't do what I told him to. So I don't believe in God anymore. Folks, that's just foolishness, and it's just backward for us to think that the king has to do what we say. You see, when we say, thy kingdom come, we're saying, Lord, you're in charge. You get to tell us what to do. And you don't just get to, you. that's your right, that's your authority. Uh, from our text, like I said, you can see this is, this is foundational. If you don't have this foundation, uh, when the, the trials of life come, uh, you're in trouble. And in Luke, he, he summarizes the characteristics of a kingdom person, a person who is submitted to Christ as king. Let me just give you a few of them uh, today. If you look there in Luke chapter 6 and, and verse 20, one of the characteristics of a person who has submitted themselves to Christ as king is that they hate sin. They have repented of their sin. Luke 6, verse 20, he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. 
Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. And just, just stop reading there. And you can see already, uh, he's talking there about the wicked world we live in. And, uh, you know, as Christians, uh, we're, we're not of this world. We're, that's not our, our goal. And in, in Matthew, when he states this same thing, you're familiar with it. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's the same here. And what he's talking about there is being emptied of self. He's not talking about financial poverty so much. He's talking about getting past being selfish. You know, if you've had a, a child, you know, man, they are born selfish. <laughs> you know, it's all about me. Change my nappy. Feed me. Hold me. You know, whatever. Uh, and hopefully as you grow, you learn not to be so selfish. That uh, doesn't always happen, um, unfortunately. But as, as Christians, we've come to a place where we see that self is not enough. Self cannot save me. You, you know, just being the best me is not the, the goal that it is. The, the goal is to submit myself to the Lord of, of glory, to the King. Um, He's, in Matthew 5, verse 4, he says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And he's talking there about sorrow over sin. Sorrow over sin. Uh, we, we need to have come to a place in our life where we've seen ourselves as selfish sinners and we've repented of it. Uh, to repent means to change your mind, to decide that's not good enough. That's not the way I want to go. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the verse in... Uh, Jude, where he says, Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. It made me think, you know, here's people who've, who've lived their whole life in the world thinking, man, I'm getting to get the success of the world. But when they see Jesus, then they say, ooh, that's nasty. And you know, when you get saved, you know, all those things that were, you thought of as success before, now you think, oh, that's no good. Like you read what the Apostle Paul said, you know, he thought, man, he was a successful Pharisee. But when he got saved, he said, no, that's, that's no good anymore. You see, there's, there's repentance over sin. Um, Jesus preached repent in uh, Matthew chapter 4 and, and verse 17. I, I mentioned this the other day. We forget that Jesus was mainly a preacher. He went from place to place preaching. Uh, he, it says he began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when he sent out his disciples, he sent them out to preach that same thing. In uh, Matthew 10, he, he said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, people need to submit themselves to the king. In uh, Mark chapter 6, it, it tells us that the disciples, when they preached, they preached, repent. They went out and preached that men should repent, it says in Mark chapter 6 and verse 12. Peter, when he preached at the day of Pentecost, you remember that in Acts chapter 3? Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Uh, Paul, when he preached, uh, he preached repent. <laughs> Acts 17 verse 30, he says, The times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. We live in a day where even in churches, you know, the idea of repentance is not popular. Uh, people say, oh, you know, that was for another time, another day. No, it's for a person now to submit to Christ as king. Uh, we need to have the right attitude toward, uh, toward sin. Repent, like I said, means to, to change your mind. When you truly recognize that God is king and you've entered his kingdom, Matthew 5, 3 will be true in your life. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It won't be a selfish life. It'll be a life for the king. The second thing, if you look in Luke chapter 6 and verse 27, not only do God's followers hate sin, they have a, a spirit of love. Luke 6 verse 27, and he, he really goes right to the, to the ultimate here. But I say unto you, which here... Did I say Luke? Luke verse six, uh, chapter 6, verse 27. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Now this is a, a good verse, by the way, to use in counseling, when you're counseling uh, married couples. You know, you, you, you tell them, now listen, God says love your enemies. You can at least love your wife. <laughs> you can at least love your husband. 
And, you know, as Christians, we've had a cha- we're supposed to have had a change of heart. If you're really saved, there's going to be a difference in your attitude towards people. True followers of Jesus love. You love the Lord. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Uh, you love other Christians, the brethren. Yeah, I get real suspicious when somebody says they're a Christian and they don't care about other Christians. L- listen, folks, you're not the Lone Ranger, all right? I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but you're not alone in this thing. First, you have a love for God. You also have a love for, for the believers, Jesus made this statement, they will know we are Christians by what? By our love. And he was talking about our love between us as Christians. But he goes even further and he says, they'll love their enemies. Now, take a look in Matthew chapter 5 and uh, verse 43. You'll see, and as you think about this, this is very different than the average. This is not the norm in the world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Like I said, these are duplicates. The one in Luke is just a bit shorter. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Now what he's stating there is the norm. That's the norm. People love their friends and they hate their enemies. <coughs> verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? If you understand who he he was talking to, the publicans didn't, that was the lowest of the low. Publicans were Jews who collected taxes for the, the people who had conquered the Jews. <laughs> they, were just, they were just the lowest of the low. So he's just talking to them in their culture, and he's saying, uh, even, even the publicans would do that. You know, they love their friends. Verse 47, if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. The completeness, the, the purity of, of God is the, the character that God puts in, in our hearts, the, the pattern that, that he gives to us. You see, uh, God doesn't love us because we're lovable. God doesn't love you because you're so cute. God loves you in spite of the fact that you are a rebel against him. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, when we talk about sin, we're talking about rebellion against the king. And God said, oh, I love that rebel. Uh, we're all rebels. So he points to any, any one of us, you know, in ourselves. Uh, true followers of Jesus, when we've submitted to God as king, uh, there's, a, there's a love in our heart. When God is your king, you love. And he talks about that, that pattern. The, the third one. True followers of Jesus follow only him. Uh, Back to Luke chapter 6 and verses 39 and and 40. Uh, When when Christ is king, we we hate sin. Uh, We love. Thirdly, we follow Jesus. Luke 6 verse 39, he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Uh, We we follow our master. Uh, We're his disciples. Uh, We use the term nowadays, mentor. (laughs) He's much more than a mentor, but we we follow him. God's kingdom is first. In Matthew 6.33, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. when we've submitted to God as king, we don't follow anyone else, is what he's saying. Now look with me, if you would, in John chapter 10 and verse 25. That's when he talks about being the shepherd. John chapter 10 and, and verse 25. Earlier in the chapter, he's, he said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the door. John 10, 25, Jesus answered them, 
I told you, and you believed not the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because you're not of my sheep, as I said unto you. He's talking to the Jews and non-believers. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Father's hand. I and my Father are one. He says, when, when we've submitted to God as king, to Christ as king, we'll only follow him. We won't follow others. Uh, we won't follow Buddha. We won't follow Muhammad. Uh, we won't follow John Smith. Uh, we won't follow Jorge Bergoglio. I don't know if you know who that is. We won't follow Ellen G. White. We won't follow Moses. Now, now the reason I mention that is he's talking to Jews here. And his message to them is, you're no longer followers of Moses, come follow me. You have to change. True followers of Jesus follow only him. Now, Jews are very close to Christianity, aren't they? It's the basis of Christianity. But you think of all those early Christians, they had to say, I'm no longer this way, I'm of the way. I'm of Christ, the Messiah has come, I'm a follower of him. Now, even Jews, Jesus' call was, leave where you are, come follow me. But he, he warns them in Matthew chapter 7 and uh, verse 21. I think this would especially apply to those, to those Jews, but it would apply to any religious person. Matthew 7 verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. There's that phrase again in, in Luke. He said, why call you me Lord, Lord? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, these are people that were religious, but they never said, he's the king. Oh, they had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. See, God has the power. God has the authority to tell us what's, what to believe and what to do. Close is not good enough. Uh, we used to say, uh, close only counts in hand grenades and horseshoes. <laughs> I don't know if you know anything about horseshoes, but uh, listen, close is not good enough. Uh, we need to be right on. We need to be trusting Christ. Th like I said, this is foundational. 1 Corinthians 3 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And as we read there in Luke, yeah, if you're not trusting Christ, it's not that you have the wrong foundation, you have no foundation. That's so important. Uh, a person who has uh, submitted to God as king, to Christ as king, will obey the Lord. Back to Luke chapter 6 there and, and verse uh, 46, where we started. Very strong words. Yeah, Jesus must have been a, a really strong preacher. I, I'd love to have heard him, you know. I, I don't think he just mumbled. I think he really, really called it out, and he was very, very clear in what he said. Verse 46, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. So he gives the positive example here. He's like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. See, that's, that's what we want. That's the, the example, that's the positive example. When you make Christ the king of your life, you have built on the right foundation. And that rock is Christ. What he's saying is a Christian will obey the Lord. A Christian will live for the glory of God. Now, he, he writes to us in 1 Corinthians 10, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. He's the king. Whatever we do, man, it's for the king. Now, in ourselves, we fall short. The, the Bible says it very clearly. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's true. Some, some have compared it to trying to jump to the moon. 
Now, there's people can jump a lot further than I can, especially nowadays. Uh, I remember there was a guy in the Mexico Olympics, Bob Beeman. Most of you probably aren't old enough to remember him, but he jumped so far, he beat the record. You know, a whole, you know, usually you beat a record by a tiny little bit. He beat it by so much they didn't, they didn't pass him again for another 30 years. P people just couldn't hardly believe it. But let me tell you, he came nowhere near the moon. <laughs> all right? Now, he came a lot closer than I did, but we all fall short of the glory of God is the point. In ourselves, we just can't do it. But we do have access. In, in Romans chapter 5 and uh, verse 1 and 2, <clears throat> he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We have access to the glory of God by Jesus Christ. And Jesus said he's the only way. The Bible tells us if you want to have what God wants you to have, you have to go through Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. Acts, Acts 4.12. Only through Christ can we access the glory of God. Uh, he, he talks about himself as the door. He's the way. Uh, let me read you a couple of verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, starting in verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. He says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. See, a person has to come to the end of themselves, don't they? Poor in spirit. But Christ Jesus the Lord. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God has made himself accessible to you. Let me put it a different way. God has given us access to him. He's the king. You remember in the, in the book of Esther, she had to go before the king, and she was worried. Because if he didn't uh, put up his rod and allow her to come, she could be killed. And, uh, you know, coming before the God of the universe is, is much more frightening than that. And yet God has given us access through the body of Jesus Christ. Well, what, a, what a blessing. And the Bible says that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the question I put to you this morning is this. Who is your king? Who is your king? You know, the average person, it's themselves. I'm sorry to say this, but you make a crummy king. You just, you just don't make a very good king. You got no power. You got no army. You got no authority. You don't even have a crown. I mean, come on. You don't make a very good king. And yet, most people, that's the authority in their life. What do I think about it? Is it someone else? That's an even more frightening thought, in a way. You know, some of these cults where people give themselves over to the power of some man or some woman and say, you tell me what to do? Ooh, boy, don't go there. Christ needs to be your king. Thy kingdom come. Do you have the characteristic of, of the characteristics of someone who's claimed Christ as their king? Has there been repentance? Is there a hatred of sin in your life? Is there a love for God and Christians and, and uh, even for your enemies, a different attitude towards people? Is there a commitment to follow Christ? You know, as a pastor, one of the least satisfying parts of the, of, of the job is trying to persuade people who tell you that they're Christians to live like Christians. I tell you, it gets, it gets pretty discouraging. Fortunately, there's faithful people who join you. And, you know, as a pastor, uh, I should just have to get out of the way. You know, you should be tr running and trampling over me to get to serve the king. Get out of the way. Let me serve, you know. Should be the attitude, not, oh, please, could someone be faithful? He's the king. If he's the king, 
we need to submit ourselves to him. Amen. Look with me at Luke, Luke chapter 6 and verse 20 again. I found this kind of startling as I, I read this. Maybe you will too, I don't know. We've read a few of these verses, we'll read them again. But I want to show you what Jesus condemns here. Luke chapter 6, verse 20. He lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Now, now listen to his woe here, what he condemns. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received cons your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. You notice something there? Jesus is condemning what most of us are living for. He says that we, we should not live for, for money. And yet most of us, that's, that's our life for riches in verse 24. We should not live for comfort. Uh, we should not live for happiness. You know, most people, I, I hear it all the time. Their advice is, well, just do whatever makes you happy. They don't say, do what's right. Do it right if, if the whole world stands against you. That's the best advice you'll ever get. We live in a world where if you disrespect someone, they might kill you. In some places they say, he dissed me. So I let him have it. Verse 26, he says, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Listen, that's not what we want to live for. Now he's not saying those are wrong things. I believe Jesus laughed and there was times when people fed him and, and so on. He's not saying those things are wrong. He's saying it's wrong to live for them. Live for the king. If you live for those things, even if you get it, that will be your only satisfaction. You fall now, he says, you're going to be hungry later. You're rich now, you're going to be poor later. Listen, much better to yield yourself to the king and let him supply. He's got a lot better supplies than you'll ever get. Live for thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. And again, I ask the question, who is your king? I know who the king is, but who's your king? Who are you submitting to? Who or what are you living for? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, I want us to really think about this and apply this, this today and, and this year. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Is Jesus your Lord and King? We're going to take our, our songbooks and go to page 218, Living for Jesus, page 218. We've sung this.